We're live. Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're very happy you're with us. My name is Garen, and I'm here with Tara. And we are so excited to have you all here for, uh, and we're hoping that you find true love with Russell Rescue. So this is our first event. We do want to let you know we've got some dogs here with us, so they may be making appearances throughout. This is Dolly behind us, who you'll hear about in a little bit, and Rocky, and we've got Willie here. So, you know, any place with dogs, you know, they really kind of run the show. So they'll be here as well. <laughs> well, <clears throat> we would love to know. <clears throat> we are so glad that you're here with us today. We want to tell you a little bit what our time is going to look like together. So without further ado, let's take a look at our lineup. We are going to talk a little bit about Russell Rescue, about why fostering is so important. We're going to tell you a love story. You're muted. Tara, you got muted. Will you unmute real quick? This is the story of our lives in this virtual world. Oh my goodness. And we're having a dog fight behind us, which is also uh, which is also what we said we hope did not happen as we started this event today. <laughs> so we're gonna tell you a love story. We're gonna meet the dogs. And then we're gonna say, if you find love, then what? And then we're gonna have the opportunity to talk a little bit about giving back and getting involved. But before we get there, let's take a moment, shall we? <laughs> and say, happy birthday to Mary Ruth. Mary Ruth is our founder. She is on the call today. Her, uh, her actual birthday is today. She founded Russell Rescue in 2008. And it feels like just yesterday in some ways. And I'm sure in others, it feels like it was forever ago. But you could, would not believe that with this small and mighty group of volunteers, this group rescues about 500 dogs a year. And we just wanted to take an opportunity to raise our uh, virtual glasses to Mary Ruth and say happy birthday. And it would not be a good rescue event without saying, would you like to show Mary Ruth some love? And if you would, please take a moment, take out your phone, take out your iPad, scan that QR code, send a few bucks her way, let her get a cup of coffee or buy a dog a collar or uh, some pee pads for a foster home because it is very expensive to run this operation. So we are just tickled pink to be able to move on to the next step. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Garen before I lose my voice. And we're gonna have those, uh, those QR codes coming up a little bit later on. So if you didn't get a chance to get them right then and there you'll be able to, uh, to go ahead and get some of that, share some love later on. So we want to, um, first of all, we want to tell you why fostering mm -hmm. is, why it's so important. So, you know, we talk about, you know, it's more than giving dogs a home or, or saving them from, from death. It's about allowing them to kind of decompress, but then also to get to know them in a home environment. Just like people, they have different personalities. Mm -hmm. Dogs have personalities as well. Some of them may love children. Some of them, not so much. Some of them may love cats. Others, not so much. So you want to make sure when you're fostering, we can get a chance to, to let the dog li live in your environment, welcome them into your home, and then really find out more about them. So when we find out about the dog, when we're fostering them, we want to pay attention to how they're acting, what are the things that they like, get an idea for their personality. So along with setting a picture of a dog, you can say, hey, this dog likes to play with balls. This dog loves other people. Um, I know my dog Dolly is, is extremely friendly and learning a lot of it, lot, a lot about her before I got her really made me know besides her cute face <laughs> that she was the perfect fit for me because I was able to know about her personality and about how she will adapt. And so learning more about that disposition really gives us a chance to, to really find true love and get to know their forever homes more quickly. I'm gonna try to get Dolly over here, but of course, <laughs> You know, that probably, uh, I'm not sure how that'll work out. I know, right? They've gone to chase each other around the kitchen table. So what's kind of fun about uh, us all being here today, including Dolly's very first foster mom, Dana, who is going to be on later. She just gave us a wave on camera. Dana had Dolly. She was one of the, the musical litter. There were five puppies, I believe, maybe six. I think there were five of them. Mm -hmm. And Dana took all those puppies, wiggly, giggly little puppy butts in, and she... Um, helped get them, uh, you know, all the help that they needed as they were um, coming into this world and getting up, up on their own weaning and all of that good stuff. And then they started to separate them out so they could get to know their personalities on their own. 
And during that time, I had the opportunity to babysit for Dolly and it turned into a, well, she's so sweet and she's doing such a great job with my dog who has had some trauma issues. (laughs) Can we just keep her a little bit longer? Um, We haven't had a foster in a long time. So Dolly stayed with us for about a month and that's the way I came to foster her. And I had no idea that my friend Garen was looking, was even considering a dog, truly. I said, it's time to post all about my little sweetheart, Dolly. I've got to tell all about her because she is such a great dog and we love her so much, but we knew we weren't her people. And so I made a post uh, on Facebook and I told all about her. And this is when Garen stepped in. So I'm eager to hear your story because I haven't even heard your full love story. I just know kind of the happy ending. So well, take I, it away. So I've been looking for a dog for a while. And one of my friends uh, in Missouri, I'm from Missouri, um, found a dog that was um, abandoned and needed a home. And I said, oh, cute. It was a black lab. And I said, okay, maybe I'll, maybe that dog's the one for me. And so I, I learned more about the dog. And I said, I'm going to go get this dog. And before I could, my friend's sister said, I want the dog. She's so cute. So she ended up with the dog. So I was still looking for a, a, a looking for a companion, looking for a pooch, and that's when I saw Dolly's face. And I tell you, this dog just—I was like, "Oh, she's mine. She's the cutest little thing, and she's so smart." I'm not just saying this because she's mine, but she is adorable. And I'll, I'll get her over here, I promise, so y'all can see her. I may step out and grab her, um, but she's just so she's just changed my life forever, and she's amazing. And uh, it was an instant connection. It was. when he came over to meet her she ran up to him like she had known him her her whole life and um, I said well I think that this was meant to be because she didn't even hesitate she ran straight to him when he walked in the door and was wagging her tail yeah okay great she was wagging her tail and she was so happy to see him and it was just meant to be from then on out so we have about uh, over 30 fosters in Middle Tennessee, and those fosters help us with all kinds of things from temporary short-term fosters, sometimes it's a mer- medical foster situation, and sometimes it's a little bit more, right? Sometimes it's a hospice foster or a longer-term foster situation, a, a forever foster, as we like to call it. This is dear Dolly. This is Dolly. Isn't she cute? <laughs> She's just Here, the sweetest girl. She is just the sweetest girl. So (laughs) she loves a beef boot. So we just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to all the fosters everywhere, not just the ones who are here with us today, who make it possible to make these love connections. So without just keeping on about how precious Dolly is, because we know how adorable (laughs) she is, we're going to move right on and we're going to get over to the fun that you all came for, which is to meet the fosters so we, we want to take a chance to get to know you we see you we, we love you thanks for joining us and we want you to tell us your name talk about how you came to know russell rescue and also what do you love about them we all are going to have some time for q a at the end we do want to hear from each one of you so make sure that you this is rocky <laughs> <laughs> um so he says hello but we want to go, go ahead and, and get to know you all as well so we'll start if we can mm-hmm. uh with dana Dana, are you on? I am here. Hi, Dana. Hi. So uh, my name is Dana Cumberland. Um, I have been um, a foster for Russell Rescue since about two months after I moved here. So about a year and a half, I moved from Texas to Tennessee. And I fostered a lot in Texas. And I ran my own dog rescue. Um, And when I got here about two months after, (laughs) um, I decided it was time to start fostering. So I applied to all kinds of different rescues and lo and behold, Russell Rescue was the only one that actually responded. So um, probably, I think a month after that, um, I took in my first rescue. Um, And then in between that time frame, also having the first one, I think I asked Mary Ruth to help me with a pit bull that someone found that came to me. So it was kind of a, (laughs) I guess, like a mutual agreement. Um, Since that point, I don't even know how many I've fostered in the last year and a half. Um, This is my current one. Um, This is Margie Moo. Uh, She's a 10 pound rat terrier um, and she is uh, the biggest snuggle bug. Um, But yeah, I do have another foster that I picked up yesterday. Um, Her name is Chelsea. She is um, just getting settled and decompressing. So um, I won't bring her on film, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I personally love dogs and I love fostering. I own seven dogs of my own. Um, so I'm a fan of big dogs. Never did I ever think that I would 
love fostering for a little dog rescue, but I truly love it. I mean, I've had chihuahuas and I had the five music babies and they were beagle Jack Russells and I've had Jack Russells and I've had rat terriers like Margie. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I truly, I love, I, the thing I love most about Russell rescue is that I can just pick up the phone and call Mary Ruth or call Trisha or call Kim and say, Hey, I'm having this problem. What do I do? Um, you know, they're always super responsive and you don't sometimes get that from a lot of rescues. Mm -hmm. Um, I also feel like it, they give me the easy ones. Like this one is easy. Um, you know, she's, it, she was actually um, adopted and then returned because the resident dog didn't like her. But then I also take the tough cases, you know, medical cases, behavior cases, bite dogs, you know, um, my dogs, my seven actually help a dog come out of their shell. So. I, and I can tell I that's a love bug right there. You've got for <laughs> sure. <laughs> she is. She certainly is the, um, she's a lap dog, um, but yet she runs with my seven bigs. Um, and she can hang with them right now. She's a little tired because we spent some time outside before this. So, well, we certainly thank you so much for the work that you're doing and for Russell rescue as well. And we should note that, you know, you said they, they were the first ones to kind of get back mm -hmm. to you and get you involved in the fostering process here in Tennessee. And they're an all volunteer organization. So that really mm -hmm. says a lot for the organization and for all of us and all of you as well. So thank you so much for uh, for you, we do want to hear from some other folks that we've got on, some other fosters as well. Monica, are you are you with us? If Monica's with us, raise your virtual hand. <laughs> I'm not seeing Monica right now. She, I believe, had another foster getting picked up today, so she may join us <laughs> later. We can move on to Cherry. Hi, Cherry. How are you doing? Hey. Glad to be here. Kind of tell us about your experience with Russell Rescue. Um, I think I've been volunteering to some extent uh, for probably about as long as Dana, maybe a year and a half or so, pretty much during the pandemic. Um, I found out about Russell Rescue, I think, through maybe social media or a friend that did some help with transport. And I, I started out just volunteering to transport like from Nashville to Columbia or you know, if I would see things like that and then um, started keeping them overnight and then started fostering after that. And I've fostered a few in the last year and a half. Um, currently, I have um, two, I have to, had, had to count, I have two fosters. One got adopted today. Yay. Little Skipper Key got adopted today. So he's on his way to Ohio. Um, so right now I have um this little man right here, Sam, he's a little rat terrier and he thinks Maggie Moo is attractive. <laughs> and then I have, um, I'll bring her on in a minute, but I have a little red Pomeranian that I don't know how old she is. Um, I think she was found in Columbia, just wandering around and couldn't find her owner. And she's, I'm for some reason, I feel like she's probably 13 or more. Um, she's a little sweet girl, beautiful, uh, baby. And I've had her for about a month and I've had Sam about a month as well. So, um, he is the best little dog. I've not fostered a rat terrier before, never had a rat terrier before. I'm a dog lover, usually kind of gravitate towards Pomeranians, but, um, Sam is probably one of the smartest dogs <laughs> I've ever had. He's about seven or eight years old, perfectly healthy as far as we know. And, very smart, like I said, very lovable. He loves to snuggle, um, but I think he knows we're talking about him. So, <laughs> but I think that's about it. Um, and I'll bring Maggie on in a minute. The that little is awesome. You know, Terry, when I and and Garen, what I love about Russell Rescue, and you you mentioned it, you said she was roaming the streets of Columbia. And when I got connected, I I'm from a rural area in Alabama. And in the rural areas, there are often not the kinds of animal control services that we're accustomed to in Nashville, because we're coming to you live from Nashville, Tennessee, <laughs> um, where even here, our Metro Animal Services are really strapped for their, um, you know, their, um, their employees are tapped. They are so busy all the time doing all kinds of things. So when they really rely on rescues, they really rely on fosters for their own services. But when I heard about the work Russell Rescue did, I was like, 
they are really meeting a need in these rural areas because they their reach extends far beyond just Columbia. And now they even help out in other states where they don't have the capacity to take in some of these dogs. And it's often the dogs that are overlooked by other rescues or often overlooked um, by some of the other animal care agencies. So, oh, hello. <laughs> Hi. And it's a job for sure that has been, you know, only made more difficult by the pandemic. You know, a lot of folks are strapped for cash. Yeah. You know, they may not be able to take care of their loved ones, including their pets. And so you may find more animals that are on the streets and in need. So now is is essentially, you know, a big time for everyone involved, especially at Russell Rescue. Yeah. Since January, I've had three dogs that have come to me because the owners, two, the two of the owners had COVID, went to the hospital for several days, then got out and felt like they couldn't take care of the, their two dogs anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third one, the owner died um, wow. in the hospital. So unfortunate. I mean, so I know if it, if, you know, if I've gotten three dogs like that, I'm sure there's millions more that, you know, same situation. So yeah. It's heartbreaking. Thank you, Cherry. Thank you so much. And I think, are you going to make a switcheroo with your doggos? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we'll I'll run it. I'll run and get her. Okay. Sounds good. We want to move on to Tricia or yes. do we want to take our comment? We have Sean who rescued Jenny from the block from Dana <laughs> or adopted, I should say. Do we want to see what Sean has to say? Yeah. Sean, let's see. Hey, Sean, are you there? I am. How are you? Good. So I'll try and rustle Jenny up here real quick. Come here, Jen. So here's Jenny. So we got Jenny a couple weeks ago, and um, my uh, wife's little dog. She passed away on us. She um, just got just got old on us, and we it was time for us to let her go. And and Laura had been looking for a dog for many many weeks, and trying to contact people online. And um, we didn't have a whole lot of success with people replying to us. And Laura found Rustle Rescue. And uh, everybody was very responsive and very helpful. And it might help to uh, let Laura talk about the experience a little bit because she was very, uh, you, can, you can see, I don't know if you guys can see Laura or not, but. But those, but those two, two are, are the biggest of buddies now. now. So I'll let her I'll talk let her a little bit about it. Can everybody hear me? Um, so I, I've had Jack Russell for, or we've had Jack Russell for about 22 years. And the last three that we had were uh, also rescues. Our first original two were, you know, we had it six weeks old and had them to the day they died. And so I've experienced that and I've experienced rescuing and I've done fostering before I moved to Tennessee. I did it through the SPCA in Virginia. And so I knew when my little baby Pia, when she passed in November, um, I've had three for so long that I knew I wanted another. And I knew how much um, fostering and rescuing just meant to me because the animals Regardless if you've had them a week, which today is our one week anniversary, um, if you've had them for a week or if you've had them for 10 years, they're still so, <laughs> they're still so appreciative every single day. And they have their own little um, weird quirks that you have to work with. So you have to have, you know, patience and be willing to work with them, but it is the most rewarding thing. Um, like Jenny, we, uh, she goes in the car with me everywhere because, you know, she has a little bit of separation anxiety for me. And, um, but I love it. You know, we're, we're buddies and she's definitely my little baby. And um, you just have to just be willing to accept them and their own little quirks that come with them because that's absolutely what makes them unique. And they don't take a single day for granted. And I think that that's sometimes where, you know, when you have an animal that has been given the world every single day, um, it's kind of like people. They take it for granted. And with the rescuing and foster, they don't. Um, they appreciate every single day. And I truly can't think of anything more rewarding um, that's out there. And 
so I have my I have my little baby and she has fit in amazingly well with the other two and um and if you can hear the squeakers in the background she's a huge like little retriever um but anybody that has any questions like I said I have I have just recently adopted with you guys and have absolutely um nothing but the best to say that it's been the best experience and I got absolutely everything I've um, I wanted and the one thing I did want to mention that I think is so incredibly respectful of the agency is all the vetting process that goes into the selection of foster parents and adopting adoptees um, having the ability to be so selective uh, and be so um, uh, to make sure you're putting an animal into the perfect household is something so incredibly commendable and perfect because so many agencies out there are in the situation where they they have to just put the animal anywhere they can get them just in the door out the door in the door out the door so to put these whole animals in foster homes first and really truly get a feel for their personality to be able to place them in the perfect home is absolutely uh, you can't put a price tag on it that is the best thing i've ever seen um and for this agency to have the ability to do that is one that absolutely should be commended it's truly um it's truly remarkable i certainly agree we've been able to make lots of love connections at russell rescue throughout the years and we saw your your love bug jenny from the block giving me giving you those kisses as you were talking and Sean mentioned as well how close you all are and Laura and Sean thank you so much that was perfect your checks thank in the you. mail guys that was like I mean you did some of our work for us thank you so much that was awesome all right moving on are we ready to go back do we have our cherry uh duo little, Mag back? little Maggie's here yeah all right <laughs> She's the sweetest, cutest little thing ever. So she barks occasionally, um, not much, but when she needs to go outside, she'll bark. Um, but, and when I got on the elliptical the first time, she barked at me. She didn't know what that was. So she gave me, I couldn't believe she started barking. It was several days after I'd gotten her. So, and I just wanted to say, I think the last, uh, Laura was talking about a little bit about this, but um, if there's anybody on that is considering being a foster, um, I saw a post or something somewhere that said three days, three weeks, three months. It is so true. It is so true. Every time I get a foster, I think, oh my goodness, you know, it's just chaotic for the first few days. They're getting adjusted and used to things. And then they start you know, kind of getting used to things and normalizing and everybody gets used to them and it really does. It, it makes a huge difference. So yeah, I think the whole fostering thing to try to figure out their personalities is just a great thing. So that's awesome. Thank you. Yes, that's good. That's important to remember. It's also important to remember for adopters too, right? Mm -hmm. Like it takes a little while. It's going to be chaos. And sometimes people in the first 24 hours are freaking out. You're like, they haven't even been there 24 hours. <laughs> calm down everybody take a chill pill <laughs> and give it some time um and <clears throat> it will sort itself out i promise all right yeah we're gonna we're gonna keep I'm rolling looking on. i think that i think it's a hit right from the universe garen we're please. gonna keep rolling on um micah mm -hmm. and uh, trisha. Um, trisha trisha are you there with abby y'all emily ingram asked um can you foster if you live outside of nashville or even outside of tennessee Ah, thank you. Thank you. So that is an excellent question. Thank you, Emily, for sure, if you live outside of Nashville. And I would imagine if you live outside of Tennessee, if it makes good sense in terms of being able to get the, um, the dogs back to this area. So as we know, some, there might be some places outside of Tennessee that are still very convenient to Middle Tennessee, right? Across the Alabama line, across the Kentucky line, even parts of Mississippi. And we have people from all over. So if you're interested in fostering in any of those areas, please don't hesitate to reach out. Our teams work with folks all over the Southeast um, and really all across the country. We even work with, I forget what it's called, but it's Pilots for Paws, I think, where they do um, flights to take dogs to other parts of the country. 
So we are just so well connected. Thanks to Mary Ruth and other rescue partners. I saw our friend Julie who got on earlier. Julie's the one who sent Rocky over um, from Memphis and made him a foster fail in our home. We made it official yesterday. Yeah. So um, that was our anniversary present. Today is our, an not, my, not our anniversary. Um, <laughs> I sent my boyfriend away for my anniversary <laughs> to go watch the Super Bowl. So <laughs> anyway, so thanks to thanks for that great question. And we'll move on to Trisha. Trisha, come on to the spotlight. Hi. Hey. Hi. So this is Abby, and she is such a sweetheart. Um, I first came to know Russell Rescue in 2007, I adopted a little Jack Russell Terrier and I never expected a Jack Russell Terrier to become a companion dog. And he was just the sweetest little guy and just my shadow, my partner practically. Um, I lost him about a, a little over a year ago, but about two years ago, my son and his girlfriend were looking to adopt. And that's when I kind of reconnected with Mary Ruth and decided that I wanted to start volunteering and uh, so at first I was just doing some transporting and helping out with adoption days at PetSmart. And then I took on my first foster was a litter of seven puppies and their mama. And they were just starting to, or just finishing up weaning. Um, I have had over 70 dogs in my house in the last two years, uh, because a lot of times I'll pick up a dog from Columbia and bring it to my house and. Uh, have the, the foster mom and dad meet at my house to pick up the dog. So even if I had them just a couple hours, they were mine for a while. But this one is Abby and she is an eight and a half year old Chihuahua. Uh, she, is, she is visually impaired. I know that she can see, um, I think dark shadows. I think she has problems with peripheral. Uh, she does not see what's on the ground in front of her, but she gets around so well. Uh, she, but she just wants a lap to sit on and someone to follow. She is the cutest little thing. I'm just looking at her and falling in love with her myself. And I'm like, I can't, I have five dogs already. <laughs> <laughs> she's so calm. She's, and it's like, she's just rocking along. So, she is yeah, so I calm. And I just love her little nose, her little coloring. So cute. And, and well, she's today. only eight pounds. So she's just a tiny little gal, as you can see, but. Yeah, you could put her in your purse and just take her anywhere. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Dress to impress for sure. Yes, she, she loves is, wearing her clothes. <laughs> it's cold outside. Driver. She needs it. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for the work that you do. Oh, 70 dogs. I know. <laughs> I'm just thinking, not at one time. Right. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no. But, so, but, but throughout the years, though, that's still, that's still quite impressive. Yeah. Quite the impressive. The most at one time in my house was 15, but that included my own dogs and two litters of puppies. Wow. Oh, hats off to you. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Trisha. Now moving on to Micah. Fun fact, Micah and I went to high school together. <laughs> That's right. I'm sure, I'm sure he's got plenty of stories, but we'll save that for another talk. Hi, Micah. Yeah. Hello. So this is Mojo. It was originally called Nojo, but I thought Mojo would be more positive. So <laughs> um, I think Mojo's been traumatized, but I think he's adjusting and feeling better now. So... He's had two baths so far in a week. Probably needs another one. <laughs> um, I'm kind of new at this. I had dogs when I was a kid. And then um, it's been cats in the family. Um, I divorced two years ago and I need a friend. So this was good timing, Tara. Thank you. Well, they are yeah. certainly great companions. And tell yeah. us a little bit more about what has Mojo been kind of getting into at your place? Uh, we've been going to um, Riverside Park in Columbia and just yeah. going down by the river. Um, we just walk around the neighborhood here on the south side of Columbia. We went to the square today. And um, we're working on a video for Valentine's Day, so. Ah, That's very awesome. good. If you have not seen Joe, I told Micah, 
He is a looker. I, he caught my heart when I saw him on the website. He is a handsome dude. So if you're looking for a dog, check him out on the website. Don't be uh, taken aback by the no in front of his name because <laughs> Mike has told me he is a sweetheart and that the name yeah. is not fitting. He's also learning right. to play the mandolin. So you could be on one of those Ooh. TV shows and maybe yeah. win $10,000 or something. So um, make sure you check him out. And um, Mike, I went down to take some photos for Russell Rescue and came home with a dog. So you see how this works when you get connected, you somehow end up with a dog at home. I don't know. I don't know how that works. <laughs> but thanks, yeah. Michael and Joe. Mm -hmm. We're going to check in with uh, Meredith and Gypsy and Linus. Meredith, are you? Here they are. <laughs> Unmute. There we go. Sorry about that. So my no phone worries. is dying. <laughs> so I had to come in and charge it for a few minutes. I'm going to go get Linus and Gypsy. They're waiting outside. <laughs> Can we talk about Meredith's cool glasses? I love those glasses. Those are super chic. Um, so I've been with Russell Rescue since probably uh, 2013 or 2014. I actually worked at one of the vet clinics that Mary Ruth used. And I told her that I used to do Pekingese rescue. And of course, Mary Ruth was kind enough to volunteer and find me some Pekingese to foster. And um, so I've been helping her out with Pekingese ever since. Oh, Gypsy, come here. Okay, hold on. <laughs> You've got to come up right now. Okay. So I've been doing rescue on and off for about 25 years through different breeds and stuff like that. And now I'm gonna try and stick to Pekingese or Pekingese mixes. This is Gypsy. Um, Gypsy's completely blind. She is like a Maltese something mix. And she doesn't know she's blind. Uh, when we go for walks every day, she is out at the end of a six foot leash. She just trusts me to like, make sure she doesn't run into something. And um, she knows exactly how far down the road it is where her little run area is that she can do whatever she wants. And um, she's completely housebroken. She loves, I mean, she seriously needs to be with like a young couple that doesn't want to have kids, but they go hiking all the time or travel a lot because those are the things that she loves to do most. Um, she eats out of a, like a food puzzle because she needs that stimulation. Um, the next thing we're going to get her is one of those snuffle mats where I feed her on a snuffle mat because she is so smart and, and just needs to be challenged all the time with stuff. So um, she knows exactly when a cat has been on the road. She knows where the raccoons cross the road. She's a brilliant little dog. And she understands a lot more than she lets on to most days. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and so I don't know how many Pekingese I've had, and these are the first non-Pekingese I've had, um, and they're wonderful. They're busy. She's very busy, but she's awesome. Linus, can you come and say hi? So Linus came to me as a Pekingese mix because he's got a very pronounced underbite, as you'll see in a minute. Mm -hmm. The other half is probably Sheltie. Um, he's up to my knees. <gasps> how cute. He is so cute and he's so sweet he lo loves to walk sorry and um also no you can't chase the squirrels and um we go for like three walks a day together all three of us and he is also housebroken he um oh my gosh he's just the kindest little dog and he and he stays pretty much near me until he sees a cat and i have to warn everybody um i don't know that he'd make a good cat companion um unless the cat want to be chased but he's um he's in a training collar now because there's still cats in my neighborhood and he seriously tried to take off and um he knows the training collars on and he just behaves he's quite brilliant and quite kind and he's a good boy and he puts up with busy busy grant grant um gypsy here all the time and he's not been one ounce of a problem ever did those two come together i saw no. one there he was found, I think, in the in Rutherford County. He was at the shelter in Rutherford County, found loose, microchipped, but the owner on the microchip was not who was supposed to have him. And she was in her nursing home and couldn't take him back. And Gypsy, who I actually call busy most of the time, and she seems to like that, she was found running loose somewhere in Lewis, wherever Hohenwald is, Lewis County or whatever. I mean, yeah. hell down a busy road and somebody happened to see her and call her and she went right to this woman and jumped in her car. Huh. 
<laughs> and um, she had recently had puppies, um, which is really sad because I think the dog is seven or eight years old and I can't imagine breeding a blind dog. I just, anyway. Um, but yet here she is, wild as wild can be and happy as a lark, but house trained and she'll sit when I ask if she thinks I have a treat, especially. She's so good when she thinks I have treats. And I think she's got terrible cataracts. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what it is, but she does better in like shadowed light. It's really weird. Too bright, she can't see. Too dark, she can't see. But mm -hmm. she seems to figure out what's going on in kind of mixed light. Mm -hmm. And she actually settles down and wants to snuggle after she gets over the thrill of something new. And then five minutes later, something else is new. So she's a good girl. It's so, they're both so cute. And thank you so much for giving the insights that you provide as well. On um, That's why we were talking about the importance of fostering, being able to bring these dogs into your home and really find out what, what, what environment they thrive in and what makes them really be, be themselves so that we can really find the right connections and right homes mm -hmm. for yeah. them. It's important because I've had people think they want a very specific dog. Mm -hmm about their lifestyle and I'm like oh somebody wanted a dog to travel with and I'm like this dog hates the I mean hates the, you know and they're like oh that you know they have to really they have to belong together you know that that I think this is my task in life is to to rescue dogs and find them the right homes and as you you know you are a perfect example you know don't let the name Russell rescue fool you. I mean it's not just Jack Russell's you know there's so, so many different types of dogs that are available. I saw somebody posted russellrescuetennessee.com slash adopt mm -hmm. in the chat. And that's one of the, that's where you need to go. But so there's, there's so much variety out there. And, you know, my, my dog is, I guess they call him what, Heinz 57, a little bit of everything. <laughs> um, yeah. And so you can, you can find whatever you're looking for. Chances are yeah. you can find it at Russell Rescue. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And I think as Cherry was talking about earlier with all the things that have happened during the pandemic with, you know, we've really stepped up to help these families who've come into crisis. Sometimes it's been with the, um, with families that have become ill or people unfortunately have passed away. Even mm -hmm. one of our own volunteers unfortunately passed. And, um, you know, these, these pups need homes and we stepped up to take them in even sometimes, um, you know, bigger dogs. We've had some quite large <laughs> dogs that we have helped um, not only foster, but also find homes for. And as Dana mentioned, even some of those dogs that others might have shied away from, we have brought them in and helped to rehab them, to make them adoptable, to mm -hmm. spend the time with them um, and take the time with our foster homes that are special like Dana, uh, to make sure that they have the love and attention and the one-on-one -on -one that they need and, or, and the time with a pack that they need in order to, um, you know, to really have the best chance at finding their forever home. So last, but certainly not least, Manya, <laughs> how are you? We're gonna we're gonna talk to you, and you've got Faith, correct? Yes, I do. This is Faith, um, and um, I have uh, known about Russell Rescue for a very long time. I used to live up close to Spring Hill, so I used to go see all the dogs all the time at PetSmart. But this is my first fostering experience. My husband and I have wanted to do it for a long time, and um, you know, with COVID, and I, I work mostly at home now. I go into Nashville a little bit here and there, but um, it just really makes it a lot uh, easier for us to do this now. So we've had Faith with us for about three weeks. She is an absolute sweetheart. When she came, she was really scared um, and she's warming up more and more every day. She absolutely loves the squeaky toys. Um, last night she danced around with the vacuum cleaner. That was the first time I'd seen that. She was played very playful. Um, but she's very relaxed. Um, she's a little chunky right now. So we're working on that. She's not super experienced on a leash. So we're working on that too. Um, but she, um, she's, yeah, she is just a super sweetheart. Gets along great with our dogs. Um, they all play together well. They all share the same food dishes. Um, no issues there whatsoever. I would say she's about 80% house trained. Um, she, you have to kind of learn her tell, <laughs> um, but she loves to go out. We have a fenced in front yard and she loves to be out there running around with our other pups, but yeah, she's eight years old and she is just really, she's so sweet. She's a good girl. <laughs> she's adorable. 
Yeah. She's so relaxed. She almost fell asleep while you were talking. It's so cute. I think she was worn out sitting in my lap here. She's oh, like, yeah. why are we sitting here like that? <laughs> she is so Listen cute. To- listening to all the talking there even the dogs are like zoom fatigue <laughs> yeah well it's certainly thank you so much uh, for the work that you're doing and faith hello hello you're super cute so if you have uh if you've made that love connection you've seen some dogs here today and you want to know what should you do next mm-hmm. um we want to let you know if you want to adopt you can go online to russellrescuetn.com And once you go there, you'll click on adopt and you'll fill out an application. Mm -hmm. And so make sure you put the dog or the dog's name that you're interested in. That's important. And then you want to know, they want to know more about where the dog is going to. So they're going to ask you some questions about where you live, if you live in an apartment or if you live in a home, um, you know, how you'll take care of the dog, if you'll walk the dog or, or just kind of let the dog, if you have a big backyard or farm or whatever you may have. They're going to want to know that to really make sure that they're putting the dog in the right place. And so make sure you put in as much detail as you can. The detail is really going to speed up the application process. And because Russell Rescue, as you mentioned, is all volunteer, be patient. So fill out the information. And then, Tara, what what else will they need? Yeah. So some of the other things that are needed, um, you will need three references. So these need to be people who are hopefully not in your household, right? Uh, hopefully have some friends and uh, maybe even colleagues, acquaintances, other people in extended family are probably okay as long as they're not, you know, I don't think my mom is the best person to put out as a reference because she's going to always give a glowing recommendation no matter what the issue is. You're going to need a vet reference. So if you're a new pet owner, ask around for recommendations, right? So Garen had not had a pet in a while. He, like Micah, had grown up with um, dogs in the home. He asked me, hey, where do you go to the vet? He asked his people in his neighborhood, hey, where do you guys go to the vet? And then called around to see who was taking new patients. And that was one of the ways to kind of shop around and find a place to have, um, you know, to say, this is where we're going to start out with our vet care so that you know where you're going. Because within the first week of your adoption, you're going to need to take your dog in for a wellness visit. So that's important to know as well. And then you're gonna to need to provide your pet ownership history. So some folks may think that some of these questions sound like invasive, but as others have said on the call, some of our adopters and some of our uh, folks who've adopted, right? They've said, we wanna make the best fit and we have a very rigorous process. I have been a volunteer on and off with Russell Rescue, kind of more on an episodic uh, uh, basis for years, probably since the very beginning of time with Russell Rescue. Um, and their founding, and I have always said they have just really wanted to make the best fit for the dogs, and they have always taken great care in those placements, and so in doing so, they need to know how are you going to care for the dog, what is that environment like, and so others have mentioned just because you think the dog is cute um, doesn't mean that it's going to be the right dog for you. Unfortunately, that's how they end up in rescue sometimes, right, particularly Jack Russell's, so that's how I've come to get involved with Russell Rescue because I'm a Jack Russell girl and I've found so many Jack Russells get returned in the first year because someone saw them on a movie or on Frasier and then they said, oh, how cute. And they knew nothing about them. So anyway, those are some things you need to know before you fill out that application, be prepared, come with everybody's contact information and then make sure you let folks know. So call ahead to your vet. Hey, I'm adopting a dog or looking at adopting a dog. They're gonna be calling to check my references. And also with your uh, references that are personal references. Hey, I'm looking at adopting a dog. These are the dogs I'm considering. Here's why we're getting a dog. So that they're prepared for that phone call and that email. So they may be reached out to a couple of different ways. That way they know it's not a telemarketer and they can also check their spam (laughs) folder. All those things are important to speeding up that application process. So you're gonna generally need to give it about a week. I know you get really eager when you're ready to like pull the trigger and get that dog in the house. But unfortunately with the work of volunteers, sometimes it just takes a little bit of time. So please be patient. No, no, uh-oh, I'm gonna move. Garen's gonna pick it up here. All right. And if you've oh, also been, if you've been inspired to foster, you can also submit a foster application as well. So you can get processed and pre-approved and then you'll be ready to find a match. So. That's our next event is going to be Getting Lucky with Russell Rescue. That'll be next month. Um, so stay tuned for more information on that. But let me, hey, Rocky. But, um, but yeah, so you can also foster, you can adopt, but you want to go to the foster application. It's all going to be on that RussellRescueTN.com for more information. And there's other ways that you can 
get involved uh, mm -hmm. and you can you can give back and get involved as well. Uh, as you see on the screen here, you can go to Kroger Community Rewards. There's more information on the Russell Rescue page. Basically, you shop and then you get you get to give money back to Russell Rescue mm -hmm. for uh, for your shopping. And then you can also donate supplies on the Amazon wish list. Donate cold hard cash, as we talked <laughs> about, um, as Venmo or PayPal. You can even set up monthly contributions, and some workplaces might match. Mm -hmm. So you may want to check with uh, your place of employment. Sometimes they will um, help help as well. And like so many people that are here. You can donate your time. You can volunteer. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, engage on social media, mm -hmm. even liking and commenting and sharing events like this one or, or pictures and status updates. That'll help get the word out to foster more dogs. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about getting animals from one place to another. Even our friends are involved. So many of them are involved with transporting dogs. Um, or some people have said they've gotten involved at events at um at a pet store, local pet store. Yeah. And so those are all different ways you can get involved. Um, and so you can share your time, you can share your money, you can share lots of things, but we just really wanna get the word out because it's so important to, to find these dogs forever homes. Yep. So if you work in the world of dealing with social media, you know how important it is to share events like this once they're, not only before they've happened, but this is gonna live on Facebook so you can share it once uh, we finish up here today and others who are maybe shopping around for their next furry friend can yeah. take a look and see some of the dogs that are available for adoption. Um, so help us do that. That'll help us beat the algorithms and get more faces and eyes on uh, on the videos and on the content that we're sharing. And just one more shameless plug to show some love, particularly for Mary Ruth's birthday. And if you would like to donate, you can do so by um, scanning your one of these QR codes, either PayPal or Venmo. These go straight to the Russell Rescue accounts and every little bit helps. Even five bucks is well worth your time and much appreciated because it takes care of a lot of special needs. As you've heard about, all of these dogs today have been vetted. Their uh, basic needs have been taken care of. They all go into foster homes, making sure that they are in the best condition possible. And, um, and we are just so appreciative again of all of the fosters who have been with us today to help show us their uh, pups that they've had in their homes and tell us more about them. Rocky is really uh, wanting a little bit of camera time. So you gotta see his little scruffy mug. So cute. Mm. He's just learning what this is all about. So we have a question here. Um, this was our pup. Uh, Donnie is a Chihuahua mix. Okay, is that a question or is that just a comment? <laughs> Uh, Tara, there is, I think it's Kristen Dillard, maybe on. Oh, okay. She said that she's fostering um, a pup right now, Donnie. Oh, kind of got it. Okay. Donnie, do you want to bring him on, Kristen? Yeah, this is Donnie. Oh, hold on. We're, let's make sure we can spotlight you. Keep here's, talking. Here's Donnie. He's a little chihuahua mix that we got probably about two and a half, almost three weeks ago. I think he actually might have come with faith to Russell Rescue. I think they were part of the same pack. So I was so sad. Yes, I see the resemblance. <laughs> yeah. So cute. He's a little He's charming, charming as well. Um, but he is just so sweet. It took him a couple days to come out of his shell. So I'm assuming it'll do the same when he gets adopted, but he loves our dog. He loves to run around and um, play with any dog that comes in the house, but he's crate trained he sleeps in his crate every night he's potty pad trained he is just so good we love having him but we really want to find him his forever home so he starts to feel more comfortable but he's a big cuddle bug and he's so sweet I think he's about six years old is what I think what they told us he's a good boy oh he's so a cute. good boy did you recruit her with the Mizzou shirt? I didn't recruit her. I saw that Mizzou shirt. I went to Mizzou. Yes. Hey, yes. that's awesome. Yes. That's so that's, funny. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for, uh, yeah. for, for sharing some time and introducing us to that cute little pooch. Yeah. So you think so. <laughs> All right, friends. Well, we have appreciated being here with you today, and we will look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, everyone. Bye.